All right, Gary, Jamie, welcome to Ranks. We've got a number of different categories for you today. You're going to have to put them in order. Yes. We're going to be starting here oh. with atmospheres in the Premier League. We've got Anfield, we've got Old Trafford and St James's Park. You've got to agree. We've got to agree. You've got to agree. You know, you, you know where we're going, don't you? Come on, be honest. I think Old Trafford's been unbelievable the last couple of years. <laughs> back, back yourself, Gary. No one on. ever no, says Old Trafford's going to no, beat. That's it, that's it. On, I Gary. know it might have been, but you, you're serious going to put Old Trafford? Oh, the, the famous ball. Anfield atmosphere. You say it's the toughest away game ever played. At. <laughs> it's Anfield, isn't it? But you, you, you're going to put Anfield. Oh, right? come on. I, 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 you, why is it the toughest place for you to go as a Man United? I think player? Anfield, to be fair, is just since that new stand's been built. I think little little bits gone from it. Yeah, so then big European 97 year clock didn't count, no. So when were they like, recently? Sorry, the big European that like, I did. They only won the Champions League and oh, they got to the fans. They had the, they had the new that? stand. When they had the that? new stand. When was that though? Like, well, 2019. Oh, we're talking about, oh, historically, are we five years ago. Are you saying when the new stand? I'm talking about now. I'm not saying when the new stand. <laughs> Of course, Anfield's going first. Okay, so James's Park in there as well. We haven't heard you talk about that yet. So uh, James Park has got better. Recently, last, obviously, since the takeover, it's been a lot better. A lot. Would better. you say Old Trafford's a better atmosphere than St James's Park? I mean, I see more of Old Trafford, don't I? So I'd say, yeah, of course. Okay, but I mean, I, I love Newcastle as well, so I've no problem with it. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to go with that. I would maybe go St James's second, Old Trafford third, but I'll. Uh, I'll go with that with Gary on the old trap. I don't even know what's best in there. But they're talk he's talking about five years ago. It, 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 it's not that great anymore, Anfield. Ooh. I've been there a lot over he's the last few years. He's got all the Man United fans on social media. Anyone <laughs> in the world that gets asked that question, <laughs> no one has put an old trap number one. Nobody. <laughs> Toughest Premier League rivalries. Best or best to watch? Yeah, or? best to watch, I think. Look, I, best to watch. Because I think Arsenal Tottenham very right. relevant at the moment. Yeah. Okay, so that, that game, historically, will always be the biggest game. Yeah. Right? That has been the best atmosphere and probably most intense game. There's been some shockers in these recently, haven't yeah. to be fair. That game, well, I've been a commentator at Sky, has surprised me enormously. Most entertaining, we'll call this. Let's do most entertaining. Last, okay. And recently, recently, last couple of years yeah. or so, I mean, that, that game, to be fair, in the last few years, has been some good ones. The FA Cup game last season, I have to say, at Old Trafford, is probably the best I've seen in a long time in terms of sort of like what happened. We'll go that with sec go that second. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a myth, this, what, this bottom one, it's a myth. What do you mean it's a myth? It's, it's honestly, it's hardly a game. Well, the, well, when you were a kid, it was the biggest game. Oh, absolutely. It was the biggest game. Well, you know when Man City, Man City were in the second yeah, that was division? Yeah, four years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that one, so, I mean, you think about the 7 0, the 5 0, and things like that. These are iconic. Nil nils. These and the 4 3 as well. And the yeah. nil nils. Yeah, iconic games, aren't they? <laughs> Did we win that game last season? Yeah. Did we win that game? Yeah, I thought we did. No one will remember that in two years. No. The 7 0 will be there forever, won't it? Come on, <laughs> what, what's the next <laughs> one? What's, what's the right, next one that we're on? Last season we had a better season than because we won a trophy. Oh, my. And then the Champions League. Premier League managers okay. next. We've got Arsene Wenger, we've got Pep and we've got Sir Alex. Well, Arsene Wenger's going there, isn't he? Yeah, that's nice. I think it's quite a simple start. I would go Sir Alex Ferguson all day long for the impact on the Premier League without a shadow of a doubt. Unequivocal that he is the most important manager in Premier League history. Hmm. We're looking for Premier League here, not necessarily European-wide or, you know... But when you look at what Pep's league. done, he's done things that Alex Ferguson hasn't done in the Premier League. So he's, well, won no. it, well, he's won it four times in a row. He's won it four times in... So he's only, he's only once or two seasons. So two seasons, in six yeah. seasons, he's won it four times. Yeah. Ferguson went seven years without winning the league, didn't he, when he first came? No, he won the Premier League its first season. I'm talking about first division, aren't I? Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Six but, Premier League titles now, though. I know, I know, but no, I mean... Sir Alex Ferguson in 92, 93, 20 in... 20 years in the Premier League, 19 years in the Premier League, won 13. Mm. Yeah. And I just think you cannot deny he's the most important Premier League manager of all time. Okay, we'll go with it. I think it's joint. I think that's it. Both, both getting a gold medal. Okay, love it. Let's go to the next one. Uh, next up, we are going for Premier League youngsters this coming season. I'll let him choose. Who's going to have the best okay. season is what we're looking for. I'll let him choose for. number one. Thank you. When you say best, I think he'd be more eye-catching because I think he'll get goals and assists, oh, yeah, yeah, whereas he's more of a midfield player, isn't he? And it's harder to be more eye-catching with yeah, respect at Palace yeah. than he's at Liverpool, but he's a good player. Yeah. Yeah. Adam Water, how long do you think Adam Water realistically stays at Crystal Palace? Because there's a lot of chat and a lot of teams that are looking for players in that realm, yeah. isn't there? In that six Listen, spot. I think maximum, maximum two United, years. Liverpool. Maximum two years, but could be one season. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Really? I'm going to go with Harvey Elliott because I think we sometimes forget how young he is and what he, he's only played 100 games yeah. for Liverpool. I always thought last season when I watched Liverpool that every time he came on or every time he was, I thought they were more energy. They had more He's about the best him. Sub. Yeah, he, I thought they were very. Yeah. He, he added a lot to He's Liverpool. Brilliant as a sub. Where do you think he fits in that slot system though? Because it is a difficult role for well, him. Well, isn't well, it? well, it actually probably suits him and a little bit more. System. I was answering, was I answering? <laughs> it actually suits him a little bit more maybe than Jurgen Klopp because I he used to play 
in place of Salah sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't got the pace for that. I think he's definitely someone who plays in the centre. So then he plays more as a number eight, but I think Slot plays with more of a number ten. Sobers like played there at the weekend, but I think he's he's definitely after that role and he was brilliant he, in pre-season. He's a player that <coughs> I think would be respected. He, look, he'll have a, he could have a great career at Liverpool. I think he'd be respected in Spain. He'd be amazing in Spain. Yeah. I, I, honestly, his technical ability on the ball. His technical ability and the way he plays. I think. That well, the one thing that does let him down is what you say. Sometimes the pace of the game, and that's why he, he does really well coming on sub. Where maybe the pace of the game slows down. He comes on. He just yeah. adds something. I think. I think Pep would love him. Yeah. Do you, Bernardo do you, do you know sometimes, yeah, like a Bernardo. You think about him in terms of how he plays. He sort of can play sort of wide on the right and be like a. I heard a term the other day that was quite good. Pep played with wide controllers like Grealish and Pep Guardiola rather than wide players. You yeah. know what I mean? He's like that anyway. He controls the game from a wide area. I think he'd be very good. Like Pep would love him. I think that Spain, he, he just needs to find I mean, I think there's no reason why Slot might There's no reason why Slot won't like <laughs> him. <laughs> him. No, there's no reason Slot won't like does. him. Because he retains possession. He's smart on the ball. He's busy. I, I, I like him as a player. And we breezed over Cobby. Oh, we, we don't here, need to, we, we, I we mean, can, he's still in the cup that. final. That's, know, it was uh, brilliant, wasn't it? That's gold. That's yeah. Remember <laughs> I'm saying right. that about Janazai? Oh, oh, clip that. <laughs> clip that. Clip that. Get that. Oh, clip. my Cara. God. Best oh, fashion sense in the oh, Sky Pantry ranks. I've been brewed. I'm coming up on the rails. We've got Cara. up on the rails. Oh, yeah, that's a no-brainer. What are we? The battle here. But I don't know. I think I'm. Gary, are we going to show the new the new glasses today? I think we should get the new glasses out because this could have oh, so got, major this... effect on the ranking. Are you, are you allowed to? Is that product placement? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sponsored by them. <laughs> Can expense that now. Right. So that's, that, that's what I seriously believe that it is. Yeah. Yeah, I do believe that. I'm fine with that. I'm happy yeah. to be the underdog. Just, you see the, like, I'm happy to. Hey, like, honestly, honestly. Your face in black. Just, just and you know something, always... you think about the journey from that scruffy grey suited, I Roberto, I mean, uh, so... <laughs> with, the scruffy, with the scruffy little grey suit on. Honestly, if you see the back you, of that what, suit, it's like... What were you told after that show? I got told by um, the stylist at Sky on the Wednesday, Gary, I, I don't think we should do light grey again. <laughs> And then there was a hair issue, there was a, there was a tash issue. Yeah. It what about the nose? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. We're going for some of the biggest signings this summer. Okay. We've got Pedro Neto, we've got Dom Solanke, and we've got Matthias De Ligt. I like this, he doesn't like the Solanke one that much. I like no, it. No, no, I like the player. I, I just think the fees of it. Do you think so, Cara? 65 mil. But in terms of just relativity of okay, other players, no, like, well, yeah, he scored 19 I last think, season in 30 odd games. I, I know, it's so, but it's the one standout season yeah. for him. Some English players, and this it happens quite a bit with like strikers that just somehow they almost need that first win, the second win, and all of a sudden they find the feet around you, with you 20. The but I, think, I think Watkins is now getting to a player that he's far better than I thought he would ever be. Tony has obviously grown in the sort. Of, I think Solanke's got that similar ability, similar journey with him. That I think, yeah, I think he's getting maturer. He's getting to his peak. What's the successful what's the actual... season? Do you think? What's the successful season for Slanky uh, goal-wise? I... If he could match last season, I think he'd have done brilliantly. No, I'm not. He's got goals 18. there. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not talking about goals. Seventeen. What are you talking I, about? I, I, I'm more thinking about the impact that he's going to have on Spurs. That's what yeah. I'm thinking. And that means he's... bringing Sun into the game more, matters into the game. Being a focal point, the pressing that he likes, that uh, the manager likes, the way in which he plays, just generally, I think he'll have a big impact on them. And if he can get. He could get 13, 14 goals this mm. season. Not enough. You, that's what we have to be point. If you're paying 65 million for someone, you're wanting more than 13 or 14 Premier League goals. Okay. Okay, Pedro Neto. Are you just dismissing the fact that I've, I've got a point to make? No, you can. I think you can, you can, you can have a big impact point. on the team. I agree. No, of course you can. Pr impact the press, can. impact the way they play. So impact, where would you have him? Make other players score so more goals around you. So what is the question here, by the way? Best you, signing. Who's been the best signing? I'd like to think it's going to be Delict. I'd like to think Delict's going to be the best signing out of those three. I mean, he's the he's the best player, I think, but he's he's not fit enough. He'd be like a, he's a Barcelona type of player, or okay. you know, even maybe a so Madrid. Is, is the question who's going to be the most important signing? Let's say that. Let's let us base it on who's going to be the most important. I, so signing. I, I, I look, I think these two are the ones that could have the most transformative impact on their teams. Yeah. Because United have got a goal from eighth, and they've got a goal from where? With the six, six fifth, last year, fifth. 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 So they've got a goal from fifth to fourth, or whatever. They've got a goal from eighth up to. Fifth. Third or fourth. Mm. So these two have the potential to be the most transformative. He, he's he's got the pedigree, hasn't he, in terms of you think of where he comes from, the yeah. clubs he's played for. Let's go in there then. I think because of Chelsea's situation just generally and his injury problems, I think I think that he's a brilliant player. Okay, the final one of the day is the team most likely to win a trophy this season. 
We've got Liverpool, we've got Man United, and we've got Spurs. We've taken City and Arsenal out of it, because obviously... I think United are on the... I think, right think, think Tenag wins trophies. I think Tenag wins trophies. The trophy collector. It's two I, think two. Wins, I think he wins trophies, to be fair to him. Tottenham gone on the board early here. No, oh. nothing for Tottenham. No. Ange. Do you know something? I would actually love Ange Tottenham. Progressed. I would love Ange and Tottenham to win a trophy. Not at the expense of my club, but I would love. Do them you to think win they take the cup competition seriously enough? He, last did, he didn't last season. Well, he didn't last season. I thought that was a bad one when they went out to Fulham last year. Yeah, Unnecessarily. Yeah. I just thought that was. A... So what, what, hang on, what's the question again? Who's got more chance of winning a trophy this he, season? He, he does that when he knows no. he's going to put United no, top. No, 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 no. He does what he does. I, I'll put United top. The reason being is they're in the uh, Europa League. It. Man United should be getting to semi-final, final of the Europa League, you'd expect. I would imagine. I think United will win a trophy this season. I okay. think Liverpool will. Yeah. I'll put United there because I think there's probably more chance of them winning the Europa League than maybe Liverpool winning the Champions League. Yeah, and then Tottenham... Need to focus on a cup, do you think, this season? Or I don't no. know why they don't. No, you can't. I, I don't, you, I, I don't you, understand. You're never going to get these clubs focusing on a cup, but they should be focused on everything. But should, Tot but should Tottenham specifically? Because it feels like that is the one thing that's labelled endlessly against I Spurs, say this about Tottenham managers and Everton managers. Like, if you come into that club... And Newcastle, maybe. Yeah, well. it's like... Just win a it doesn't matter. Finishing, I want to say it doesn't matter. Of course it does. You know, the first thing is for Tottenham to get in the Champions League. I get that. But if you win a trophy, you're a hero. They haven't won trophies for so long. It's that age-old question. Would you rather finish top four or win the FA Cup? The clubs would rather finish in the top right, four. Right, so you've got, a, you've got a mentality that now exists in our country where teams would rather not win a trophy mm. than win a trophy if they're in the Champions League. I don't think it exists amongst their fan base, though. What's that? Their fans always you would take. Fan? No, I'm not a Tottenham fan, but I think they. No, but whenever you speak to them, they would forget. always take a trophy over Tottenham. But you four. say that. You say that. That if there are empty seats in stadiums at all in the Premier League, it's when there are cup competitions on. It's not when there's a, a league game on. You generally, just generally, the league games are ten. No, to be all, fun. The, all these clubs would rather get in the top four than than uh, than myself. Man United next season would rather get in the Champions League than win the FA Cup. Oh, I think for Ten Hag, it's more critical that he gets in the Champions League than he wins the FA Cup. Yeah, yeah. But that isn't that a little bit sad? Isn't that a little mm, bit sad? I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Boys, love that. Brilliant. Well done. Thank so you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Well done.